the eye of, um, of uh, is it Peter? Uh, the Peter Zeitlinger, an Austrian. A magnificent uh, yeah. cinematographer. Yeah, did the last but 14 you, films with him. Do you tell him exactly the composition you want, not or do you always, want his no, composition? Not always. In, in case of how I was staging the, the three scientists who are listening, in that case, I needed to, to balance the, the kind of frame myself in a way, but, but Peter is, is, is uh, strong like an oxen. He used to be a hockey player for Spartak Prague, Whoa. one of the best teams in Europe. <laughs> well, as a, as a young, very young kid, but uh, I, 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 I love the confidence in his physical strength and I love his feeling for rhythm. He stops me in the middle of shooting of something, let's say, um, Rescue Dawn, and he drop, takes down the camera and he says, Werner, uh, let's stop this. The scene has no rhythm. Hmm. And it's the first time a cinematographer sees that and tells me, and of course he was right. So you weren't enraged when he said that? He was so right. I, I immediately sensed, yes, there was something not working. And I said, Peter, what do we do? Uh, number one, the scene doesn't work because the dialogue <laughs> sounds like paper. It, it reads very well in the screenplay, but it sounds like paper. Let's have life in the dialogue. So it takes me 30 seconds and I write a new dialogue. And he suggests how about swinging in with the camera a little bit earlier so that I pick up this decisive moment and we do it again one and a half minutes later and it works. Fantastic. So I'm blessed with good, good people. So he, he but I discovered him in a way, also. <laughs> in the, in the, like Columbus discovered America. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I discovered him as uh, in, in a film that was really derided, an Austrian film by Ulrich Seidel, a very radical, very unusual filmmaker whom I like and I. He got such bad reviews that I walked up into the best newspaper um, uh, building, in, uh, best newspaper in Austria, and I demanded that I write a review for the next film. Hmm. So I did it, and I write a, uh, wrote a very good review, and, and at the end I wrote, the real discovery in this film is, is a young cinematographer, Peter Zeitlinger. And Peter was so, so stunned by it that he wrote me a letter and, and, and said, uh, I would love to work with you maybe in five, maybe in ten years. Three weeks later, we were working together. Fantastic. <laughs> Beautiful. And, and uh, just so I understand it, so you're, sometimes you're quite happy for, to have his eye. Of uh, course. Uh, th and, and he's very comfortable if you say, Here's, I want you to do exactly this way, Peter. Then he's perfectly happy with that of course, as well. Of course, yes. That's, Beautiful. It's, it's such a... It's always, if you, if you do not understand how to collaborate, you will never get the real sense of movie making. Werner, in Rescue Dawn, something I wanted to ask you, and now picturing him back with you during yeah. that scene, it brought uh, a thought to mind. The, I was really intrigued. First of all, the, the, the captors in the camp were as terrifying to me as any Hannibal Lecter. Um, uh, and I don't know where you got these men, and I don't know how much how much direction you lavished on them, but it was terrific the way with a minimum of dialogue. I, I can't remember if, if they had very yeah. little to say. Nevertheless, distinct personalities emerged. They weren't sort of the, the sort of yeah. stock stereotypical guys, and each in their way had different, different things to be, be afraid of and, and maybe different vulnerabilities. And mm -hmm. Can you talk about what, what, could, could, how, did you, how did you get it to be so good in that way? Well, I find the right people. That's uh, casting is is always such an important element, and and somehow I, I I find the right ones. Most of them actually were people who had been in films before, but not as actors, but as stuntmen. Mm. Some of them, and and the one who did the somersaults forwards and backwards, and right. so I loved him so much for that that I said, do it for the in this scene, and 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 I. Uh, I took um, the best of him into the movie and the best of someone into the movie as well. And then, by coincidence, I saw a video of a scene of a Thai movie. And there was one man in the background who had this very intense, intimidating look. And I said, we have to find this man. Turned out that he was not a Thai, but he lived in Cambodia. 
and relocated him. And he only spoke uh, the, his own Cambodian language. He did not speak Thai, nor French, nor English, nor anything. And he was brought on, on the set, and he's acting in the film as the mute, as a, as a walk, no, they call him walkie-talkie uh -huh. because he never talk, because he never speaks, never, never. And, and walkie-talkie, <laughs> the man, uh, an, an actor whom uh, nobody knew, nobody could have any conversation with him, I, I directed him anyway, and we understood each other. There was actually one assistant, a Thai assistant, who spoke a few words uh, of, of Khmer, of the Cambodian mm -hmm. language. Mm -hmm. But um, it's fine to work um, into the unknown, into an area where, where you have to make everything that's beautiful and intense and special about a human being, how to make it productive for the screen. And sometimes uh, you have to do it without understanding the language and without mm -hmm. any communication, verbal communication. Or, well, for example, the native Indians in uh, Fitzcarraldo. Um, very few of them spoke Spanish. And all of them spoke either Ashininka, Kampa, or they spoke Machigenga. And, of course, you have to make yourself understood anyway. And that's the beauty about making movies. And they were the ones who understood my travails and tribulations with Kinski so instantly that they offered to kill him for me. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes I regret that I didn't give them the Lord. <laughs> um. Which reminds me about Aguirre and, and a question. Uh, Popol Vuh, who, who was credited with the score of, of a number of your films around yes. that period, I think. Um, is that the, because uh, uh, I know this, this, there are roots to this name anyway. Is that a band? Was a, an, a, yeah, a band which was basically one person, Florian Fricke, who unfortunately died three years ago. Mm. Close friend of mine um, <clears throat> who was a prodigy as a, piano player and had to give up a very promising career because he had inflamed uh, ligaments and became a, a composer. And he named uh, his group, which was mostly him because he played many instruments parallel and recorded it on parallel tracks and a few other musicians. He named it after the sacred text of the Kachikele uh, Maya Indians, the Popol Vuh, the the book of um, uh, Buch des Gartes. Well, I don't, I can't mm -hmm. translate it right now. And, and it's one of the very, very beautiful and important texts for me, and I gave it to him to read it. Actually, Lotte Eisner reads, the great film historian, reads some of Popol Vuh as a, as a text for Fata Morgana, for oh, Mirage. Wonderful. Okay. So, and that's the context. Yeah. Uh, Popol Vuh comes uh, from this book, which was very important for me, and I kept reading and rereading it, gave it to him, and he named the group Popol Vuh. Hmm. And we had a very, very fine rapport about music, and he was very important for me. Then later on, after about 10 or 12 years of collaboration, we, we slowly drifted apart because he was moving very much into a pseudo-culture of new age, which I cannot stand at all. Um, I still loved him, but I, I, uh, I, I moved into some sort of a different direction. Mm -hmm. And the style of his music was more and more influenced by, uh, by, by uh, a, a babble of pseudo-philosophy. Um, and um, so that was the reason why mm -hmm. our collaboration drifted apart. Mm -hmm. we, we stayed friends f until he died. Mm. Werner, are you a musician? Do you play? No, I'm not. Uh, I can't even read music scores. Mm -hmm. But I do stage operas. And one of my next works, uh, well, I have to do a film in uh, New Orleans. And from there, I have to scramble to Spain and do an opera, Parsifal, uh, the last Wagner mm. opera, together with Lorin Marcel. And where will it be? to have in, in Valencia, in Spain. There's a fantastic uh, modern building which looks like a landed spacecraft by uh, a great architect.